Hello everyone, I'm about to share with you a recorded live that happened in the early morning hours of Saturday, May 8th, and the year is 2022 somehow. I wanted to give a huge shout out first to of course Kat and Alex who allowed me to just come and tag along and do my medium thing. And I want to give a huge shout out especially to my Patreons who actually, it was their contributions that funded this trip. Those Patreons are listed right here. Thank you so, 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 so much for supporting me and allowing me to do what I do. You will also notice that I am back in the land of the south. It is about 90 degrees as the sun is setting and the humidity is very high and this is where I belong. So really every time that I talk about how cold I am in Pennsylvania, please understand that where most people would be swimming in sweat at this point, I am very happy and warm. And so you won't find me complaining about these temperatures, though, you do find me complaining about um, it being in the low 40s after the transition there. This video will be split up in a few different parts just because we went live for over three hours and there's a lot of editing to do. For as much as I possibly could for when the sound lined up between three different live recordings, I put them side by side so you can see all different perspectives. So throughout this video, please be sure to comment. If you see things or if we're missing something and you see something else, please drop a timestamp in the comments. I would absolutely love to hear what you get. So without further ado, here we go. First, I wanna share with you the notes that were taken. This was when I had 15 minutes to walk around the main floor and the upper floor of the Jenny Wade house. This was going in without any prior knowledge. I just went around and wrote down what I got all within 15 minutes. In the first room, you'll see this is the room with a lot of floral patterns for the wallpaper. I got more of a residual memory, and I picked up on a woman tending to sick people, um, a woman in her 30s or presenting in her 30s, brown hair with a middle part. She looked younger like in looks than she did in her eyes. Like It's like as if her eyes had seen more than her age had. As I said, this was not so literal as much as it felt like I was looking in on a memory of the space itself. The next room, you're gonna hear me talk about this man a little bit later when I called him my dude and he did not like that. This was in a kind of parlor room. He was sitting in a chair on, it was the chair on the left, like when you first walk in. And he said that he wanted to move and he wouldn't because Jason, who was with me on the team, was standing in the doorway. He was totally not welcoming. <laughs> uh, he was old, he had like, like, almost like mutton chops i guess you would call it on the side of his face and i think i'm getting that right um he was tall and had graying like almost white hair and i was projecting my thoughts to him throughout this time and he actually said to me aren't you going to talk out loud and i just said no <laughs> uh we weren't filming or anything at this time and i don't even know if there was a recording so i just figured i could talk faster if i just projected um so he was unsatisfied he was pretty unsatisfied with me not giving him attention and he found me rude so you know we just both agreed to not like each other on the stairs I felt like I was walking past a woman who was standing there she doesn't seem to be like all there so it may have been more of a residual sort of being there or it could have been a memory as well. As I said, I was going pretty quickly so I couldn't read into all of this. So the room at the top of the stairs, at the very beginning, I saw a chair up there and I just straight up did not want to sit in it. <laughs> um, I picked up on a little boy. He was watching me write this down, says I'm quiet um, and I don't know if he could read. So that's why he was asking about what I was writing and had to move on to the next room. I just called it the room with bricks in it. I got a feeling like right in my throat I think I wrote down, I don't like the empty canes, combs. I'm not sure what I wrote there, goodness. There was a man who was just crouching where the ceiling met the wall and it kind of gets lower by there. I do not think that he regularly 
was there. I don't think that he died there by any means. Um, I did not get the sense that he was right in the head. He just kind of kept staring at me and crouching like that. And he wasn't showing any interest in Jason whatsoever. Yeah, definitely didn't like how he looked at me. I don't even know why he's there. Once again, did not have the time to run into it. Something walked behind me and then he laughed. And then I felt like a warmness on the back of my neck. Still don't know what all of that was. <laughs> I called this the red room. Honestly, I didn't get much going on in that room at that particular time, it, but I did get the feeling that somebody was looking out the window or looking out of the window at some point. That was more of a residual energy, if you will. So the storage room, or what I was calling the storage room, I really picked up on a lot of the objects having seen things like just sort of residual things, but I didn't get the feeling that any of those objects had anything attached to them per se. I did get the feeling that things, I'm not entirely sure if they were human, like to hide in the corners. And remember when I say that, I don't necessarily mean demons. I, I very much mean they're just not human, they're energies. And someone looked at us from the other room that we had just come from, it was a woman. Then we got back to a room that we were going to use for HQ and then we ran out of time, but I picked up on a different woman. She was older, curious. Um, felt like she was friendlier than a lot of the others and she was not dressed in civil war period garb so she was past that period and we go to the basement i was really drawn to this man who was sitting on the bench and you'll see me sitting next to him later on in the live um he was of the union he was very dazed he was friendly had brown hair he said to me they don't often look me in the eyes and I didn't get the sense that he died there, but perhaps somewhere close by, like outside, which I mean, of course the battlefield is kind of surrounding the town, so it could have been that. He seems to enjoy the quiet that happens there, but he also mentioned looking for a woman. And then I also saw that he had a gunshot on his side, likely what pushed him into passing. And it seemed like he knew of kind of what was going on, but I was surprised to see that he was still holding his wound because typically when somebody's aware of all the things that they've happened, they are also aware that they don't need to look wounded. But yeah, he still holds that wound from time to time. And for just seeing him and talking to him and being kind, he told me thank you, which was really moving. He pointed to the corner where there are a bunch of jars and there's a mannequin laid out and that represents Jenny Wade. Yeah, so the energy was really thick over there. <laughs> I didn't want to walk too close, not entirely sure why. And then I heard someone say, why do they keep this body here? It's in the way. <laughs> I got like an older matron kind of feeling. And then I got a feeling in my gut. And then a man straight up put his hands on my shoulders from behind me, which I'm not used to being touched like that. That was not fun. It made me realize that I guess my shields were down. I also got the feeling like I felt like I was being played with. It was kind of like, oh, play with the medium. Let's see what happens. I touched the bricks on the ground just because I can hold a lot of energy. And I heard someone say, not gonna find what you're looking for there, little lady. <laughs> and then I got the feeling of like more were coming in, like men were coming in. And then I got, see me like you see me, see me. That was from a man with blonde hair and blue eyes. And then they were all really quiet all of a sudden. So there's another room not in the very back, but on your way to the boiler room, I, I picked up on a man sitting on the stairs and then he said, you here to do what they did. And this was after Kat and Alex had already gone through so Kat could get readings as well. I just looked around and there were some other ones just sort of sitting there and I was like, why are you all here? And one said something to do, one said you're pretty, and one said like your scarf, ma'am. I was wearing a headscarf though, it was hard to see by the time I put my hood up and I went live. And then the back room, definitely hated that. There was like a man or a being or something like that that was hanging out in the very back. Uh, I actually called Jason in because I felt like it was getting warmer the more that I was in there and I was asking if he would touch the boiler or, you know, see if there's any plausible reasoning for why that room would be getting warmer. And he also said, he's like, yeah, it does feel warmer here. He was asking why I wouldn't enter and I just told him that I didn't have to and he was really about me entering that room but I didn't like it because he was a spindly man and he was looking creepy so I was like no I'm not coming in but yeah he would hang out in the corners I'm um, very arrogant and he kept wanting me to turn my back on the way out so you better believe when I did actually turn my back I shielded up hard and he got nowhere close to me hi everyone surprise live I, I am with these people. 
Hello. Hi, guys. <laughs> this will be posted on my YouTube later because obviously I understand most of you are on the Eastern Coast and you might be asleep by now. Like, I would normally be asleep by now, but uh, we're at the Ginny Wait house. Yep. Yes. I don't know if you guys can hear Rebecca talking. Because <laughs> my people aren't awake at this time. <laughs> my people thrive on this time. <laughs> they live for it. Yes. So, now I'm live too. Yes. I'm here intentionally blind. I've never been here before. I do not know anything. We just did blind readings, Kat and I both. And now we're going to get to the paranormal investigation side of things. Hello, friends. Hello, family. It is I, Spooktastic Cat. Hi, everybody. So I am literally Re Rebecca the Ghost Guide is live. Spooktastics is live. I'm live. We're here at the Jenny Wade house. For the first time ever, guys. I am not so doing the investigation over. part. That's not my bag today. Lowers. Today, Lower. I'm leaving that all to Alex. I'm going full medium for this investigation. Uh, feel free to say hello. And uh, we just, Rebecca and Kat just did their walkthrough, their psychic walkthrough. And then um, we got about 45, 40 minutes left here in the Jenny Wade house. And then we're gonna head on over to the orphanage for some more spookiness. Is it okay if while we still prep, if I just like walk upstairs real quick, yeah, just to give fine. us a little more breathing space between the three of us? Yeah. Perfect. Uh, do you wanna go down into the basement? Sure. Yeah, let's I got my flashlight ready to go and everything. Okay. Woo! So we're gonna go Going down on a trip. Space. All so, right, okay. Y'all are setting up. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I'll absolutely. hang out with my dude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. You're not my dude. I understand. Okay. Goodness it is a, it is a phrase. You, you know what guys? You ain't even ready because we're going, we're going until four o'clock in the morning. So I've decided to take a walk upstairs just to give us a little bit of space to talk. So I don't know if you've ever seen the Jenny Wade house. It has been featured on Ghost Adventures. It is very well known for being a haunted location in Gettysburg. A lot of things have happened to Gettysburg as we know. Yes, I do have my friend with me. No, he is not in here with me. And we have been doing our walkthroughs and it's a lot, I'll tell you. No, I was not talking to Rupert. I was talking to another man here um, for this particular situation if I likely will not be talking to Rupert because for paranormal investigations we're supposed to talk to the spirits here even though um, a lot of them don't want to talk to us because they're really oversaturated with a lot of people coming to talk to them for tourism reasons and paranormal investigation reasons um, so yeah um, P.S. If you see me shaking, it's because I'm cold. It's 85 and sunny generally speaking in North Carolina and it is cold and like 40 degrees here <laughs> for those of you who are just joining us we are at the jenny wade house in gettysburg pennsylvania uh cat spooktastics and rebecca the ghost guide did their psychic walkthroughs and i will say the results were really interesting uh got some really interesting impressions so we have about 35 ish minutes left here at the jenny wade house before we go to the orphanage and for those of you who know me the orphanage is a bit not a great place for me. So uh, the fact that I'm going back, I'm a little crazy. So anyway. As you guys know, usually I would be doing the investigative portion. I would bring my equipment. I would be doing all of the fun stuff. I am not doing that tonight. Tonight, I have decided to flex my ability muscle. And I am going to just go straight from what I perceive. What I'm hearing, what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling. And I'm going straight psychic medium through this whole investigation. I have not done that in a long time. And I'm very excited to see how this experience is going to go. If it's going to, you know, uh, be successful or if I'm gonna be worthless. I've, I've never been on like a professional paranormal investigation thing before. Um, I've certainly gone out for other investigations and I've done mediumship readings for others, but um, thanks for gifts, everybody. Yeah, I just went around and read things from each room and not every room had something but i got a lot of notes from each room some of which were impressions of things that happened here and some of which were spirits and yeah it's it's been interesting Right now, actually, we're just, we are sitting in one half of what was a two-part home. There is actually a hole 
hole in the wall right across from me that goes into what is considered the Jenny Way house. I, I have to tell you, it's heavy. If you do have sensitivities and you can feel those things through live streams, this is pretty heavy. And if you're gonna be joining late or if you gotta come back later, guys, we're gonna be going till four in the morning. After, is everyone here mediums? No, me and Rebecca are. Rebecca and I are on totally different levels. We perceive things very differently. So we're trying to overlap in our own ways with what we perceive. We did two separate walkthroughs, did not talk to each other and just put our own impressions into what was happening. Alex is a professional, and then her friend is also a professional investigator as well. I am as, I'm, I'm not as professional. <laughs> you guys know this. If you know me, you know this. Um, that is why we started late, because the walkthroughs took a little longer than we expected, because we needed, like, you know, we needed to articulate what we were feeling. Actually, Jason, if you could. I got Jason here helping me out. Um, so... I want to show you guys some cool equipment that I just got. Um, so this is a REM pod that is in the shape of a candle. So what's cool about this is that um, it lights up when, you know, things get near it. So, so you can see it doesn't go off unless I touch it. I haven't spent a lot of time in Gettysburg. I'm intentionally blind on all this and I'm going to learn about all the history later, but I wanted to be able to channel without the bias. Um, no, I'm in Gettysburg. Um, so there are people standing around all over the place. Other thing I got ready is a spirit box. Thank you for the hearts, friends. Um, I also got a spirit box and I also have, uh, my Phasma box program. What is this house most known for? It is most known for this, the, the history of what happened to Jenny Wade. Um, there are still remaining bullet holes in the walls and the doors. And we will we will dive into those things. We went in pretty cold. I only know very basic things about this place. So I have my Phasma Box program. Oh, I also have a Mel meter. So this senses EMF and uh, temperature. So it's always interesting how I get so many viewers from like fart talk. I'm always want, you know, it's not, eh, you know, it's fine. <laughs> If Fart Talk is interested in uh, ghost stuff, I'm here for that. All right, so I'm going to kick on my... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, wow. Did you already die? Oh, there we go. I, I was like, I put in brand new batteries in here. So this is a Mel meter. It's going to um, detect EMF as well as temperature. Uh, there's also a handy-dandy little... Um, light with it too. That's kind of nice. I'm going to turn the backlight on. So, uh, also I have, I have, um, dowsing rods. Cause if I'm not outside and I can actually control, like, you know, make sure my arms don't go nuts. I'll try out dowsing rods. Always interesting. And then I need to kick on my computer for a phasma box. Do they mind me being here while well, the man in there does? <laughs> um, yeah, there's, I think part of it is too, like, I'm not at my best, like, right now, just because I'm tired, and it's cold, so my body is heavy, <laughs> so to speak. I know Zach Baggins has been here. That's all I know. Oh, when we drove into Gettysburg, it just blew up. Like, it was everywhere. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Would you like to come with me on this journey? So here's the break in the wall. And I felt somebody calling me from in here. So we're gonna go in there. I heard you. I just felt something. I don't know. It's like somebody was calling me. It was weird. There we go. I got my speaker tuned up, my external speaker. And the other thing I'm keeping in mind is, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, my 
EMF meter isn't getting triggered by the technology or the computers. So we are going downstairs. I am being summoned back to the land of people. Thank you. And this is where I had a lot of very interesting experiences and I talked to a number of people. So, I'm not going to fall down the stairs. It's my down down here. Here. It's getting triggered by technology or the computers. So, um, no, it's just my face IT. You should definitely go to Gettysburg. All right. Looks like, <laughs> looks like Rebecca. Rebecca is here. <laughs> We're going to do, and then we got Kat here. Ooh, we gotta as watch well. that. I just thought of that when I was panning around. <laughs> yes. TikTok might be weird. Okay. You never know. Oh right. I. I mean, it looks. It's what? just. It's just a pile of blankies. I'm sorry, Alex. Be very careful. Yeah. It was a boob. I apologize. My bad on the boobs. All right. Um, May I sit here? Are, there, are these okay to sit on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 100%. Collab of the century, my friends. All right. That is the general consensus in the chat. <laughs> Collab of the century. So, All right. Yeah. So, Jason, you want to kick off the lights? Sure. Yeah. I'm going to position you guys this way so that you can see behind me. I am a terrible thing about right. open spaces behind me, but I'm going to put up with that. Okay. Right. Hello, Jump Jolly chair. Mama. All right. We are in the basement, the cellar of the Jenny Wade house. Yes. The spooky stuff. Yes. Alex? What's up? Oh, never mind. Yeah. Hmm? It's over there, right? Yeah. The, oh, yeah. Let's, uh... And, yeah. If <laughs> this lights, it just goes dark behind me. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, I can actually transition my ring light from a, um... I can turn it off for a second. Okay. Actually, does that is that okay for you guys? Is it yeah. cool if I keep it dark like this? Because mm -hmm. it helps to cut out like if you think you see something in the corner or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. Um. So the way the candle works, y'all, just so you know, you basically have to come up and you know t physically touch it for it to go off. Yeah. So that's what this Here, is. We have equipment set up right here. Do you see all of it? You can't see my hand. I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. So many comments. So many comments. Oh, again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alex, could you touch the candle again? Yes. Oh, it's over. It's over here. It is a candle that it can be touched. It's like it's EMF, but it's a candle. It's really cute. It's, yeah, it's like a little REM pod and a candle. And I like to use that kind of technology because it's more familiar to them. Yeah. Looks sure. at least in looks, it looks more familiar. So. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, everybody's like, that's awesome! <laughs> Alright, so another thing that we want to keep in mind is that anytime we whisper or say something... Say afterwards. Yeah, you make sure you say you're talking or something because we do have the recorder back there. So we don't want to like, taint our stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one rule I always remember. <laughs> I'm trying to see, like, I'm going to put you guys somewhere, like, here, so you can so get So, my millimeter is, like, not showing anything now. It's crazy, because it was just on. It was just, it, it, it's on right now, but now my millimeter's not showing any data. That's odd. I mean, and it's been on. And it's that been, is very strange. Yeah, it's just, it's blank. So, I might not really be, oh, the, the, the orphanage is next, so after here, that's where we're going to be going next. Yeah. But right now, we're going to yeah, finish our time anything. here. That's odd, because it's not showing any data now. And I wanted to use that in the back to check your temperature thing. That is very weird. Yeah, my mel meter is completely blank now. Yes, Courtney, we are at the Jenny Wade house. But yeah, you can see, that is weird. It's never done it just that stopped. before. It's not even, it's, it's just not showing any, any data now. It just went blank. So and there's a new battery in there and everything. It doesn't, they don't, they don't do that. They don't do that. They don't do that. Ooh, we're overwhelming. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, um, so it's just my face, not tonight. Um, I'm, I think Kat and Rebecca are going to go to the battlefields tomorrow, but it's actually illegal to ghost hunt on the battlefield after dark. Wow. 
Yeah. Park you rangers will, will get arrested. Park rangers will ar will arrest you. I respect that. Give them their space. Yeah. Um, because so many people tend to go out there at night without actually like being allowed to and mm -hmm. cause a ruckus. So yeah. that way, guys, now you can see me, and then the candle is right there, so you should be able to see that as well. All right. Okay, so we have about twenty minutes. So do we want to do spirit box or do we want to do? Let's go with Phasma. Phasma, yeah! Oh, I can't wait for Rebecca to experience this. Okay, here we go. Phasma box is going on. You're gonna hear Phasma box. I will explain it later. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so why are you not going into this? The Bluetooth is hooked up to this, but it's still coming out of my computer. <laughs> who's messing with my Who's messing with my stuff? <laughs> Just want to Michael say, it. Just want to say hi. Hi. Is it okay if we ask questions? Yeah, go for it. Uh, hi, my name's Kat. It's nice to meet you. Hey. Thank you for letting us uh, sit in here with you. I'm sure you get a lot of people doing this exact thing with you, huh? I don't like that. <laughs> May I ask a question? Do any of you know who the one is in the very back? The one who's kind of arrogant. <laughs> I almost thought I heard Seth. And it escaped. Are you sure you can be here? That's what that sounds like. Don't worry, we're allowed to be here. I'm going to try reloading this really quick to see if it makes a difference because there's no reason why this shouldn't be feeding through the speaker because it's always fed through the speaker just fine mm -hmm. something's messing <laughs> alright let's try again technical difficulties we, we know this <laughs> there we go there we go there you go. There you are. Thank you. Are you doing well this evening? How we have William? Like Medi something, Medi. Be them. Be them. Um, you don't need medicine. That was that was the 
That sounded like a little giggle there. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. Woo. Haunting you. Haunting you? Cute. Maybe. I love it when they say stuff like that. <laughs> it's a good time. Could you tell me who the woman is that sits on the hearth? I heard something. Oh, no. I heard something coming. Oh, it's starting to feel you shouldn't be there. Duh. Hi. What was So Kat and Rebecca are getting ready to go into the other part of the other, of the basement right here. If you don't want us to go, tell us why, please. Is their anger thing? It's their anger. No, we have to go in. Why are you angry? I'm getting some pain on the side of my neck right now, like right here. Okay, so I just saw the white underneath Jenny blackout. You saw the what? The white underneath Jenny mm -hmm. blackout. Really? Interesting. Something just went directly across. I have my flashlight, which I can put like this, just in case. <laughs> this yeah. is a TikTok. <laughs> Do you? I'll be with you. Yes, yeah. a really good read. Yeah, my whole neck is like tensing up now. Yeah, my whole neck is t tensing up right now. Ooh. So this is this this over there. That is what we're looking at, guys. It's there's a, there's just like um. Are you ready to walk into kind of a, a situation? That would be. Okay. I. You just a shadow. Yeah. I need. I will. I'm gonna walk in, that. but I'm gonna have my light on. I won't keep it on when I walk in, but I'm just gonna have it like on the ground because I will. Since I'm not familiar, I'm gonna fall. Yeah. Safety first. Yeah. No, friend. <laughs> enjoying, the They're enjoying the moment. Oh, okay. You want, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Oh, 
in there, but yeah, you know. That was not me. Something just knocked over my camera and my Somebody tripod. Somebody doesn't like me very much. Uh, a number I don't of think somebody's... we should push that issue either. I, okay. It's like they woke up because the lights went out, which is wild. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The outlight. <laughs> the outlight. I knew that my, I know for my, my friends and family here in this live stream, they love a spooky S-Box session. So I went into this side room, which is where the boiler sits, and I got a glimpse of a few things that were just holy, <laughs> unholy, yeah. if you think about it. But, um, oh yeah, no, it was fast. Mm -hmm. hmm. That was interesting. So what, what exactly did you get a glimpse of? So oh, yeah. there's a, there's like a, uh, like the other side of this, there's another spot. There's another fireplace. Yes. So I will actually move over here so everybody can actually find this one. So it was, it, it was doing like this and it would just like pop around. And then I turned and looked at the fireplace and it was like this. Yeah. And then it went like that and yeah. down into the dark underneath of the shelving. I got it really long when it's on my guy. Oh, he's fast like a spider. Yeah, like, that's where I was thinking. And every time I moved the light, it would skitter in a different direction to get away from that. And I was like, these kinds of things are very common, especially in places like a lot of death, battlefields, graveyards, things like that. It's just kind of here. And when I run into a York peppermint patty, I get the sensation that somebody said something about it that they probably shouldn't have said. Nice. Oh, I hope you guys enjoyed the visual of me skittering. <laughs> yeah, good times. <laughs> all right. Do y'all want to go into the kitchen? Yes. Yeah. While, I we, think while we still that. have while we still have some time. Yeah, we'll go. <sighs> when our ten minutes left. Ten minutes is enough to have a good time. Until right. Yeah, yeah, but. Ooh. Well, uh, I think it's probably wise that we're removing ourselves from this room now. Hear that? We're gonna go. And you have to stay. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to stay, but <laughs> you're not coming with us. Like, like, go see the pyramids, the Eiffel Tower. Go. See I, uh, the world. I got, like, up in the gut and, like, for a second felt like... Okay, rude. Who did that? Uh, was that like a literal thing or was that a feeling? It was like um both, a little bit both. <laughs> Excuse me. But unfortunately, haha, <laughs> jokes on you. I can't do that. <laughs> so you are on your own. So, so guys, guys, next time I go to a spooky situation, situation, I will just take you with me because that, that was quite interesting. interesting. And, and I wasn't, wasn't as I wasn't really scared. Oh, so I was just like, oh. uh, okay. Yeah. Go grab our stuff then. Let me know when you got the stuff okay. out. Yeah. The light so we're going to move on to our next location. Oh, the oh, we need to get the recorders, yes. All right, I guess I'll go and get, get my... my... Yep. It is time for us to go to the orphanage. To the orphanage. 
So guys, if you don't mind, See, I'm going to leave you asking, right We're going here. to the orphanage. I literally know nothing about it except for the fact that apparently it was an orphanage. And the point of that is, well, I'm trying not to find myself. So at one point, we're going to find out about the Jenny Wade house. <laughs> or at least some of you already know. I don't know anything still. So. Uh... I'm gonna go into the house again to get more stuff. Should I go off my live? Do um, you have to drive to the next location, Cliff? Yeah, yeah it's just yeah. down. It, it's literally, you can literally see it from here. It's just across the street and down. Oh, can you? Can you can walk. It, can we walk? Do you want to walk? Sure. Or? We can walk. Yeah, we can walk. I lost the feeling in my toes, so that would be very helpful. Um, so I want to just have an eye on the phones outside just to make sure that. You know what? If somebody steals my phone, it would be a break. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just expecting cold. it. I didn't think I would need an extra jacket. You need that. I will be fine. I'm quite toasty, actually. Take my sweatshirt. How are you toasty? I have a blanket in the car, too. Actually, Rebecca, I got something to help you out. Even better. Hold on. I got you, friend. Give me a second. Remember, I'm an outdoors any time of the year investigator. I got the good. Hi, I'm in the we south. We gotta break out our, our usual warmer. cemetery stuff. <sighs> and we are gonna go get Rebecca, the comfy. So she can if I tell you what the temperature is here, all of you are gonna be like, it's not that cold. We are good well, it was 85 and sunny in one oh, no. I left. My boots <sighs> fell out of my bag. Yeah. My notepad of notes. <laughs> Thank you guys for sharing. I really appreciate it. Um, this is the moment you're going to want to be here for. Yeah, it was cold and rainy. I'm going to tell you about that place. Right there? See that place? Mm -hmm. Right there? I think so. Those there have been talking to me most of the night. He's been cool. Apparently, the orphanage is a scary yeah. place. <laughs> and that's where we're going next. <laughs> the quick change makes it feel good. It does, for sure. I actually had to pull out my sweaters from um, storage in order to come up here. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. I'm still alive. My particularly toasty overcoat. It's funny when everybody's like, "You're shaking. Are you terrified?" I'm like, "No, I'm cold. I can't feel my feet." Blanket? You. Is this something that somebody's gonna tug on? <laughs> That's funny. Ah. Okay, we're getting ready to go to the orphanage. Good times. Oh my god. <sighs> All right, getting ready to go off to the orphanage. This location is going to be interesting. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> ah.